Welcome to Max Num, guys. I'm going to be writing it down on this piece of paper. I've seen a couple of YouTube videos that do this, and they're pretty good. So I wanted to try and follow that formula. Let's say we've got an array. The array is eight, four, four, an array of length three. The question tells us we've got to add each of these numbers with some value x. We're going to get three results. We've got to add all of these to get a final answer, which we'll call res. What we have to find out is not x itself, but rather for how many values of x is res maximized. And one additional constraint they've given us is that there are l bits that are set in x. So what does that mean? Say l equals 1. x can be 1. x can be 1, 0. Remember, it's a binary number. x can be 1, 0, 0. x can be 1 followed by 3 zeros and so on. There are infinite possible values x has. For how many of these infinite values is res maximized? And if the answer is infinite, then just return minus 1. Here I've written down the decimal equivalence of 8, 4 and 4. Let's say L equals 1. What are the possible values of X? X can be 0, 0, 0, 1. In this case, what will RES be? 8 and 1. This bit remains unchanged. The rest of the bits become 0. So 8 and 1 is going to give us a result of 0. 4 and 1 is going to give us a result of 0. 4 and 1 again gives us a result of 0. This is going to be 0. We can definitely do a lot better. Let's say x equals 4. Now 8 and 4 is 0. 4 and 4 gives us a value of 4. 0, 1, 0, 0. 4 and 4 is again 0, 1, 0, 0. This gives us a value of 8. A final result of 8. 1, 0, 0, 0. And finally, let's say x equals 8. That's 1 followed by 3 zeros. 8 and 8 is 8. 4 and 8 is 0. 4 and 8 again 0. This also gives us a result of 8. That means that for x equals 4 and x equals 8, we're getting a final answer of 8, which is the maximum possible answer we can get. Which is why our answer will be 2. 1 plus 1, that is 2. There are two values of x for which res is maximized. Now let's say this is our input array. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out the contributions of each bit. Let's have five columns. First, second bit, the third bit, the fourth bit and the fifth bit. The first bit is going to be the most significant bit, the first bit from the left. The second is going to be the second from the left and so on. Now we know that when we convert the fifth bit to its decimal equivalent, it's going to have a value of 1. The fourth bit is going to have a value of 2 power 1 or 2. The third is going to be 4, the second 8 and the first 16. Let's figure out how much each of these bits contribute. Now if we have a look at all the fifth bits, the last bits, None of them are set. This is going to contribute a value of 0. What does this mean? This means that suppose L equals 1 and I say X equals 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. That means my final result is going to be 0. That's because none of these bits are set. Let's have a look at the fourth bits. None of them are set again. So this also contributes a value of 0. The third bits have two values that are set. That means it's going to contribute a value of 4 plus 4, which is 8. The second bit is going to contribute 8 because only 1 is set. And finally, the first bit, the most significant bit, only 1 is set. So this is going to contribute a value of 60. Now if L equals 1, which of these values would I rather choose? Naturally, I'd much rather choose 16 because that means my final result will be 16, which is better than 8 or 0. So if L is 1, X has to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. This will give me a final result of 16 and this will be my best possible answer. If L is 2 instead, then what will I do? One bit is obviously going to go here. 
the first bit is going to go here because that's the best possible value where will i put my second bit should i put it in position 2 or position 3 both of these will give me the same answer these last two have to be zero but whether i put it in position 2 or position 3 my final answer is still going to be 24 so i've got one bit left and i've got two positions to put it in i can either have 11000 or 1 or 10100 both of these are going to give me an answer of 24 so my final result will be 1 plus 1 that is 2 in general if there are r bits left to be filled and there are n blanks that is to say n spaces having the same value the formula to calculate the number of possibilities will be ncr it's a standard combinations problem and this is n factorial by r factorial times n minus r factorial now the last condition we've got to tackle is a condition where there are infinite possibilities let's consider the same example and let's say l equals 3 here it's a no brainer our result will be 11100 this will give us a final answer of 16 plus 8 plus 8 that's 16 plus 3 16 which is 32 the moment l exceeds 3 what happens suppose l equals 4 the first three bits are going to go here naturally but now it doesn't matter where i put the last bit the result is still going to be 24 the result will be maximized regardless of where i put the last bit so i can put the fourth bit here i can put the fourth bit here instead and remember there are infinite zeros preceding each of these values so i can put a bit here i can put a bit here i can put a bit here and so on this means that the moment l exceeds the total number of bits that contribute we're going to have infinite possible values whenever this happens we're going to be returning minus 1 All right, guys. This is the code right here. S B is going to hold the total number of bits that contribute, the total number of bits that can add something to the final answer. In the end, if L is greater than S B, then we've got to print minus one. Our result will be infinite. P V holds our position value, and visited is going to be used to help us calculate S B. This entire loop is going to be used to calculate S B and P V. We've also got to sort the position value. That's in order to put the greatest value first. In the examples we've seen, it just so happened that the most significant bits contributed the greatest value. That's not always the case. Let's say our input is eight, followed by hundred ones. In that case, we'd much rather select the ones position. That's because that will contribute a value of 100 that's why we've got to sort it in descending order to ensure we're choosing the greatest value now since it's sorted in descending order if the current value is not equal to the next value that means it will be greater than the next value so we put a 1 at that position however if there are many values that are equal then we've got to count how many of those are equal and check whether l is less than count if it is then we've got to apply the ncr formula we just discussed we scroll up right here we can see ncr is n factorial by r factorial times n minus r factorial and here i've defined the factorial function and used a little cache as well that helps us return the results faster finally all we do is print our result which will be our final answer all samples have been passed and the submit test should work as well as we can see right here so guys that's the solution to this problem maximum i hope you liked it if you did hit the three buttons that pop up on your screen right here hopefully this problem makes you more familiar with sorting and more familiar with binary numbers and how they work now that we're done with the hardest sorting problem we're going to move on to the next code monk lesson that is search make sure you all stick around for that